Hi, my loves. Welcome back to the Stars Cartel channel. If you don't know, I am Star. Today, I'm here with another dream. In this dream, I am meeting my husband at a mall to attempt to make up and get our relationship back on the right path. When, um, while we are there, he does some things and says some things to make me upset, and I decide to leave. Now, as I'm leaving, I end up leaving um, and going to a different mall or a different part of the mall. When I get to this mall, um, I'm basically going there to meet up with my mom. When I get there, I'm walking around the store that she is in and... Uh, he sends people, okay, he sends a group of girls to come up there to try to fight and rob me. Well, jump, okay, because it wasn't just one, it was a group, okay? As we are getting into it, they keep specifically going after my wedding ring and trying to snatch it off my finger. However, my mom sees this and she calls security. trying to mark it so I know I'm, I'm done with that dream. I didn't write it. I didn't, didn't share that dream. Okay, so we got two scriptures. The first scripture comes from Luke. This is Luke um, 1 and 67. His father Zechariah was filled with the Holy Spirit and prophesied, Praise be to the Lord, the God of Israel, because he has come to his people and redeemed them. He has raised up a horn of salvation for us and the house of his servant, David, as he said through his holy prophets of long ago. Okay, and the second scripture comes from John. 19 and 14. Here's your king, Pilate said to the Jews, but they shouted, take him away, take him away, crucify him. Shall I crucify your king, Pilate said. We have no king, but Caesar, the chief of priests answered. Finally, Pilate handed him over to them to be crucified. So here's the message for somebody. Here's the message for somebody. Here's the message for somebody. You know, this scriptures. First one is talking about the uh, birth of John the Baptist. And the second, the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. You have to understand. When you are chosen by God, you will not. Um, it's not always going to be a simple narrow role you are not always going to be the fan favorite everybody is not going to be in favor of you everybody is not going to be happy that god chose you everybody is not going to be happy if god is using you to speak to them everybody is not going to be happy with the things god has to say there are some people that think about god and think of him as you know a God that is never um, angry about anything and a God that is never judging and a God that is never sending wrath and that is simply not true. But here's the thing. Even when you are in the midst of trouble, you know, just like in this dream, this man was acting up, okay? And God was not happy with him. And you know, when uh, there are some men that they get upset with me and they say, well, women shouldn't preach and women shouldn't do this and women shouldn't do that. Well, a lot of men drop the ball when it comes to preaching about adultery. So let's talk about it. A lot of men are not happy to say that in reality, a man is supposed to have one wife. And let's talk about it. And I just feel like God is saying that there is not always going to be a big parade for you. When it comes to Jesus Christ, when he, he was living, he lived a very humble life. He lived a very meek life. And there were not a lot of people that were happy to celebrate the fact that he was the son of God. They were angry. They didn't like that he was convicting them the way that he was. They didn't like that he was humbling them the way that he was. They didn't like the fact that he was doing things that they could never do. 
The Jews themselves screamed this. They shouted, take him away and crucify him. So here's what God said. Even if it's a person, regardless if this is really your God-ordained spouse or if this is a counterfeit, there may be times when they themselves are going to try to crucify you. They will try to persecute you. They will try to sacrifice you. They will try to cause you harm. But God says the sacrifice has already been made. You have, there's no reason for you to be saying, well, you know what? I'll be the sacrifice. Sacrifice for what? Jesus already died on the cross. God said he is not calling you to do that. We already had the Lamb of God. There's no need for you to be sacrificed. So this is for someone. This, this is, it could be a situation where you are being asked. You know, this person could be asking you to sacrifice your, uh, your loyalty to God. God has already told you that this person wants to do things that he is not okay with. They want to live a life the way that God is not okay with them living their life. Regardless if this is somebody, they want to have multiple spouses. They want to be able to have as many mistresses as they can fathom. And they want to be able to, some of them, you know, it could be a situation where they want to be on the down low and you just sit there and allow it. And they want you to accept this, that, and the third. God said no. And they can try to put you on a chopping block as much as they want to, but it will not come to pass, says the Lord, because you are doing what he asked you to do. The sacrifice has already been made. You will not have to sacrifice your peace so that he can be happy. So that he can chase after his lust. You will not have to sacrifice your patience and your kindness and, and, and just your, your security just so that this man can be happy. You should not have to sacrifice your safety either. And, you know, dealing with somebody that wants to do this, it will put you in a position to where you are sacrificing your safety. Because if these mistresses will do this when he's upset with you, imagine what they will do when they are upset with you. And yes, they will be upset. I, I literally just released a message today about a mistress that was upset because uh, she realized that the man that she was messing around with wasn't just interested in her. Well, she should have been figured that out when she realized that he was married and was messing with her on the side. His wife wasn't ugly. It's not a situation where she was bad built or she uh, she had some go. No, she was fine. She was beautiful. And if he can be so lustful as to want more than what he already has, then you can imagine, of course, yeah, you can be beautiful and you can have this kind of personality. You can have all these things going on. You are not the only person that this man is going to see as attractive because that's just the way it is. And, you know, that's, this is something that is common knowledge. Yes, you may have a very beautiful spouse or a very handsome spouse, but there's always going to be somebody that's prettier. There's always going to be somebody that has a nice body. There's always going to be somebody that keep their hair and their nails done. It's always going to be somebody that got a wonderful personality. But that does not mean that you are, it's okay for you to go and mess with them. That does not mean that it's okay for you to go and chase them down. That doesn't mean that it's okay for you to be with them. And, you know, it, it also, like, I just feel like for somebody, you may have found yourself in a position to where you, your spouse deliberately comes up with arguments and they want to fight with you and they want to go back and forth with you so that they can get you to do what they want you to do. And you tell them, no, you put your foot down it and you mean what you said. And they want to try to send people to try to fight you to get you to bend to their will. God says you will carry on doing as he asked you to do. Regardless if what he asked you to do is to file for divorce or if what he asked you to do is to go on about your business and be by yourself. It is what it is. But if they don't want to be into the will of God, they cannot expect to receive blessings from God. And that's the truth. And y'all, while I'm uh, recording this video, it's so much noise going on outside. And I feel like God, is, like this is coming into this message that it is impossible for your marriage to blossom the way it's supposed to, for your marriage to bear any fruit, if there is always other noise going on. 
instead of him in this dream, instead of him chasing after me and trying to fix the problem, apologizing for what he did wrong, trying to make things right, putting forth effort to make me feel comfortable. He wants to send a gang of women to fight me. That is not love. You don't do things like that to somebody you love. You do things like that to somebody you can't stand. You do things like that to somebody you hate. You do things like that to somebody you got a problem with. Because I don't see, my, I, I'm not expecting somebody that, is, that calls themselves my friend, my comrade, to go about and try to get me set up. And to, of all things, to get stolen, my wedding ring. God said, this is not a situation where you are dealing with someone that loves you. And he's showing you that. And this is not a situation where you should be in mourning. This is a situation where you should be in celebra celebra celebratory. You should be celebrating because God is letting you know that he will not be mocked. God said he will not, I will not be mocked. He will not be mocked. And this person is trying to mock marriage and trying to mock a godly, uh, a godly union by convincing you that it will be okay for him to have all this other noise going on. He got this woman from up the road trying to tell him this is what he should do. And then he got this person over here trying to tell him he should love you this way. And they telling him, they convincing him that he should treat you this way. You don't need that. You need to be with somebody that loves you wholeheartedly. And they're going to put forth effort to show you that they love you wholeheartedly. They're going to go all out for you. And going all out for you is not them gathering together troops to try to attack you. To try to come after you. To try to cause problems for you. God says he will cause them to scatter. If they do that. Because he said what he said. And uh, when this man comes to God, praying to him, saying that he wants his wife back or he wants to get together with his spouse and he wants to make things right, he needs to mean it. And that doesn't mean him just throwing something together. That doesn't mean him doing the bare minimum. When somebody really loves somebody and they really intend to have something, they going to do their best. When somebody wants to graduate, they put forth effort to pass their classes. When somebody wants to be on the dance scene, they going to practice extra hard to ensure that when they come uh, for the competition, the, uh, for the, for the, uh, what is it called? The recruits. When they get to the, thank you, Holy Spirit. When they get into the recruits, they going to be on par, top par. And this is somebody they're not even putting forth any effort. They don't want to. They want to try to force you to just accept them as bare minimum as possible. And they want to go behind your back and talk to this person and tell them, no, don't do that. And no, don't, don't do that for them. And no, don't help them with that. And no, you shouldn't make them comfortable. They're going all out their way. To ensure that you feel as though you, it's like this person is trying to come at you in a situation, like they want to have pitchforks. Just like in the scripture here. They want to gather together a bunch of people to uh try to force you to be okay with what they got going on. God said no. And it don't matter how many people they gather together. It don't matter what lies they come up with. It don't matter what all they got. They, they saying this happened and that happened. And they feel like you should this. And they feel like you should that. God said, oh, well, they can feel however they want to. You are not obligated to be with somebody that don't want to treat you right. Period. You are not obligated to be in a relationship with somebody that don't love you. You are not obligated to be with somebody that is abusive. You are not obligated to be with somebody that don't, they want to mistreat you every chance they get. They want to cheat on you and they want to go out and do whatever they want to do. God said they need to be singled in. They are not a, 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 a honest married person. Then what is the point of being married? This is somebody, they just want you to suffer. Because they see the light within you. They see the light that God has put within you. There is something that God has blessed you with. There is an anointing that you carry. And they don't want you to have it. But they can't take it. They can't steal it. And so they are trying to do whatever they can to keep it dimmed as much as they can. God said you do not deserve to be married to nobody that act like this here. 
and they can't force you to be with them. They can't take nothing from you either. I just feel like for whoever, like whatever it is that God blessed you with, that's yours. They're not going to be able to send nobody to come and try to force you to let go of it. They're not going to be able to send nobody to try to force you to bend to their will. They're not going to be able to do whatever. Like this is somebody, they, they want to use some kind of like, they, they want to flex their, their muscle. They want to bully you and harass you and force you into doing things you don't want to do and being with them under obligations that you don't want to deal with and deal with it. Like God said, no. And it's final. God said it's a no and it's a hard no. It's a no and it's a final no. You do not have to sacrifice your well-being, your happiness, and what you truly want and deserve so that they can be happy. If they really want to be with you and they love you so much, then they're going to do what God said. They're going to live righteously. They're not going to feel like they got to stick their thing everywhere and they got to chase after everybody and they got to be with everybody. That is nasty. And if you feel like it's nasty, then gosh darn it, you don't have to deal with it. Why should you? The, the way this person living, they going to end up with something. And why should you have to deal with that? Why should you have to endure that? Once again, the sacrifice has already been made. You are not a sacrifice. And that's the message. God said, let them go. They can send whoever they want to. They're going to have to deal with God. And that's what God said. And that's what God said. And that's what God said. God said that you are not going to have to deal with them just cheating on you whenever they feel like it. God said you are not going to have to deal with them trying to send a group of thoughts to come after you and try to fight you and steal from you. God said you are not going to have to live a life where you are unhappy and miserable. Why should you? And if they really love you, they will get right with God. They, they wouldn't be trying to force you. This person, I, I just feel like God is saying this person trying to be right with Satan. And that's their business. But they ain't got to force you. They, they can't force you to accept that. They cannot force you to accept that lifestyle. And I, I just feel like for well, whoever this is for, God is saying, even if this person is trying to make you uncomfortable. Even if this person is trying to make you feel as though you're unwelcome everywhere except for in the, the hell hole that they have created. God said he will open up doors for you where you'll be fine. In this dream, as they were trying to attack me, I ended up like the security, like the security came um, quickly, first of all. Second of all, they took me to this area where they couldn't even get back there. God is saying that he will protect you from anybody that's trying to cause you any harm, from anybody that's trying to come after you, from anybody that's trying to attack you. Like in reality, these, these women, they crazy anyway. Why would they want to fight you? And you are literally giving them what they want because they want the man to themselves. You giving them the man and they want to come and chase after you and fight you and tell you, no, well, you need to share. Why? Here you go. Congratulations. You wanted them so bad and now you got them. God says you do not have to deal with this nonsense. Like these same people that's chasing after you, trying to fight you and force you to be with this man will be trying to fight you and harass you for being with them. I, I, me personally, I prefer to just go ahead and get the fight over with and go on by my life and be happy than to sit around and have to fight with people for the rest of my life. I'm not doing that. I'm not doing that. And especially when the competition is over. We are not competing for the number one spot. I won already. God said, why would you have to sit around and sacrifice your peace and your patience and your, your calm of mind, your peace of mind? No. Let them have him. 
God said you deserve to be happy. You deserve to have a blissful life. You deserve to have a calm life. You do not deserve to live a life where you are constantly going back and forth with people over somebody that don't even belong to them. They trying to steal your ring as if just because you don't have a ring on, all of a sudden you not married. They delusional and they crazy and that's fine if they want to be delusional and crazy and that's fine if that's what he want. He want to have 10 women. He want to have 20 women. He can have all the women that he wants to, but God said he can't force you to accept it and that's final and that's that. He cannot accept you to be okay with that. He cannot accept you to be into his will. He cannot accept you. He cannot uh, force you to do any of this. And you don't have to accept it. He can't force you. He cannot make you. That's the message, y'all. And you know, this is somebody, they, they operated in a demonic spirit. And that demonic spirit does not like the light that is within you. And, you know, just like I, this demonic spirit wants to go around and be with all these people. But the light within you says, no, you don't want somebody that's an adulterer. You are not going to accept them being an adulterer. And you are going to take the option that God has given you due to the fact that you know that your spouse has cheated on you to go ahead and separate from them. And that's your right. They're not happy about that. They're not happy about that. They want to try to twist and turn the words of God and tell you that you're wrong and you're supposed to just accept it. No, you are not. You are not obligated to be with somebody that wants to be unclean. You are not obligated to be with somebody that is constantly defiling themselves. You do not have any, it's not, you are not in a, it's not a situation where you're forced to do that. God says he is not forcing you to do that. He is not going to force you to be with this nasty man. And that's that. And if those women want to share him, that's their prerogative. But you don't have to. You don't have to deal with it. You don't have to deal with it if you don't want to. And you know, every, that, and that's, that, that's what it is. And that's the message. That's the message. Thank you guys for watching. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe. Deuces.